Hello everyone. In the previous lesson of the course Environmental Management System, we discussed about the introduction to Environmental Management System. The implementation of Environmental Management System can be carried out in number of ways. One of the way is to refer to the guidelines which are given in ISO 14001-2015 standard. So, when we say an environmental management system is to be implemented with reference to this international standard, it is necessary to know about the ISO. So, in this lesson number 2, we are going to discuss about this organization. So, the objective of this session is to understand the history and scope of ISO. Now, in this session, we are going to discuss about the history We are going to discuss about the history of ISO and the scope of ISO, how the ISO is been extended with reference to its work and we are also going to discuss the members of ISO. This organization which is been known as International Organization for Standardization. It was established actually in the year 1947 in this name of ISO. Now, when I am saying its full form is International Organization for Standardization, whereas its short form is ISO, purposely this short form is being used because ISO it resembles with a Greek word ISO. ISO means equal and hence this organization adopted its short form as ISO. So, in the earlier time in 1926 it was established as ISA its full form was by then International Federation of National Standardizing Associations and at that particular time its main focus was on mechanical engineering. So, it was the International Federation of National Standardizing Associations. The standardization bodies who are representing a particular country, a particular nation its association was been formed for the formation of a standard. But during 1942, because of the World War II, this organization was disbanded. It stopped its operation. But again, during say these 1940s, the second industrial revolution took place and as a response, the need was identified to have to have these international standards and hence again in 1947 the delegates from 25 countries they met at the institute of civil engineers at london to reform this organization so in february 1947 this organization was again formed and the name was given as International Organization for Standardization. So, during 1947, about 25 countries, the members of 25 countries, they represented while the establishment of this ISO. And later in the time, it has been expanded to the larger extent. Now, let us understand the scope of ISO, how ISO works, how ISO is related 
to the preparation of these international standards. So, ISO is world's largest developer of voluntary international standard. Voluntary international standard means these standards are not compulsory to be adopted by any organization. Any organization can take upon the task of implementation of these standards. Also, this ISO is also voluntary organization, means it is not related to any particular association, it is not related to any government organizations. So, it is a voluntary organization and how this organization is formed with its members who are the recognized authorities on standard. Every country has got their own standardizing agency, a standard organization. Say for example, for India as a nation, we have got Bureau of Indian Standard as national standardizing agency. So, the members of this Bureau of Indian Standard, they represent the membership of India at ISO. Likewise, about 170 countries, national standardizing agencies, their members represent their respective nation at ISO. So, ISO has got about 826 technical committees. The standard development process is actually taken care by these technical committees. Whenever a need is identified in the international market, in response to that need, the standards are developed at ISO and this task is taken by the technical committees. So, there are several technical committees and subcommittees who prepare these standards. These committee are inclusive of the experts from different domains. When we say different domains, the members, the experts, they belong to technical areas, administrative areas and so on. So, all the various fields are considered and persons having expertise are made part of these technical committees and subcommittees who prepare the standard at ISO. So, since 1947, ISO has developed about 25,000 international standard. Now, these are the figures which are being referred from the website of this ISO. So, till date about 25,000 international standards are being developed by this ISO. Now, when I say the national standardizing agencies of respective nations represent their membership at ISO. So, there are three categories of these members at ISO. These are being categorized as full members, correspondent members and subscriber members. Full members are such members which can influence upon the ISO standard development process as well as the strategy for any policy making by participating into the ISO meetings. So, full members can participate into these ISO meetings as well as they have got advantage to vote into these committees. So, this is the privilege got by the full members that they can participate and they can vote in these ISO meetings. As well as 
these members can sell and adopt these international standards nationally. So, these are the benefits gained by the full members. Correspondent members, they can observe the development of ISO standard, this process. They can also attend the meeting of ISO. However, they are not able to vote for the meetings. The votes are required in case of the passing of the standards and in that case, correspondent members can simply observe. They are not allowed to vote for these matter. Correspondent members can also sell and adopt these international standards nationally. The third category of members is subscriber members. So, subscriber members, they can keep up to date on the ISO works, but they cannot participate into the different meetings of ISO. They are also not allowed to sell or adopt these international standards nationally. So, these are the various members of ISO and this was the scope of the International Organization for Standardization, ISO. The next part of it will be covering in the next session. Thank you very much.